I have a Minolta MC Telerocker HF 30 centimeter, so 300 millimeter F4.5 lens here that I'm going to be fully disassembling. It's one of the longer Minolta MC rocker lenses that was in a mirror lens. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is obviously the size of this lens. It's a great deal larger than the 200 millimeter Minolta. And if I, I put it next to the 135 Minolta, you can see just what uh, the, the size difference of these two lenses is. I'm gonna be fully disassembling this lens today, getting down to all the body sections and optics and also disassembling the diaphragm, taking that apart and um, putting it back together and cleaning it off a little bit. This lens is a little bit more difficult to disassemble than something like the 135 millimeter Minolta here, just because it is so much larger. It has a lot of similar design elements with the 200 millimeter, 200 millimeter Minolta lens. Um, which means that you can't really easily access the diaphragm without disassembling the whole lens. And how it's assembled, not everything locks together in fixed position, so you have to be careful when disassembling it to mark how everything is lining up so that it all fits back together correctly later. So on this particular lens, the easiest way to start off is to actually go in through the front of the lens um, and just we'll get access to the front of the diaphragm and some of the front glass pieces. Getting access to the diaphragm itself uh, is pretty involved and you have to disassemble the entire lens. Um, but you can get access to the front of the diaphragm very easily um, with just a few steps. So first off, I'll slide out this lens hood here. And on the front body section here, right under where the lens hood was, there's a little slotted screw right there that's just holding this entire front lens hood assembly in place. So just loosen that up. You don't need to remove it fully. And then the entire lens hood will unscrew. So there's the lens hood. There's the rest of the lens. Now I can just grab the entire front assembly here and unscrew it. So I'm going to remove the entire front optics. And the front optics on this lens are pretty large. It's very similar to the 200 millimeter Minolta um, where you can actually go in here now and remove some of the different rings here. So if you look closely, there's little uh, slots right here for a spanning wrench on the front section and then also on the back section. And if there's fungus inside the optics, not just on these front or back surfaces, you can actually remove the different elements and go in and clean inside of those if you want to. I'm not going to do that, um, and it's usually uh, not a good idea to do that unless you really need to and there is fungus inside because it's easy to introduce more dust or mess up the coating of the lens if you're not careful. So I'll just set aside this entire front optic piece. And now that gets us access to the front of the diaphragm here. You can see that if I tilt it, it might be a little bit more obvious. The diaphragm is uh, really far down within the lens, which is one of the things that's going to make the disassembly of this lens a little bit harder. So it's really hard to actually clean it at this current stage. The best you can really do is kind of just dab at it with a Q-tip, but you have to be really, really careful not to press too hard on the diaphragm or else it will end up deforming and uh, breaking the lens. So now we'll actually go in from the back of the lens and start getting access to some of the back components here. Another thing you'll notice right away is that the back glass element is really far down inside the lens as well. It's um, maybe four or five inches down inside the lens here. So it's pretty hard to get access to that um, in its current state. So we really have to remove a lot of the back sections to be able to remove the back optics and actually get access to the back of the diaphragm, which is what we'll now start doing. So first off on the back of the lens here, Notice these four little screws going around on the back of the mounting plate. These are just holding in this silver ring on the back section here. So we'll undo these four. And that exposes the rest of the mounting plate, the screws for the rest of the mounting plate here. So there are another four going around here. And this is actually holding in the entire mounting plate assembly here, along with the stop down lever mechanism and all those pieces. So we'll undo these four as well. Now the entire mounting plate assembly here should just slide out of place. You notice that it also has some of the mechanical coupling, couplings for the stop down lever on the back. So I'll set that aside for now. Now we have the, where there's the little spacing ring right here that I'll just remove as well. Get that out of the way for now. And now we have the aperture control ring going around here as the next lever, layer of the lens here. So on the aperture control ring, there are two important parts that have to be removed for it to actually be um, separated from the rest of the lens easily. So first off is the easy one. It's the little ball bearing that makes the clicking sound as you move the lens back and forth. So the ball bearing is behind this screw over here. So if you just loosen up this large screw, the ball bearing is right behind it. So 
There's the ball bearing. And the aperture control ring is still stuck in place after removing the ball bearing. Um, and it's caught by this little uh, button over here that forces open the lens going from the outside of the lens to the inside through this slot right here. So we have to actually remove this little button to be able to remove the aperture control ring. It's kind of a pain um, because there are these two little slots on either side of it. So right here and here. You can use a spanning wrench on or a screwdriver uh, to actually get it started. But when you're first undoing it, it can be a little bit of a challenge to get it started because these, uh, the two slots are so close together. Okay, so just unscrew that. Now the entire aperture control ring just lifts right off. So there's that with the long post extending down to actually adjust the aperture. I'll talk about how everything is getting coupled together on the reassembly here. You can see that the back optic is still pretty far down within the lens, so it's really easier to just continue on removing some of these various body sections rather than trying to remove it at this stage. Next up we have the ring. We have the ring here with the tripod mount on it. It moves back and forth. There's this lever over here that it can actually lock down where the tripod mount is situated. Loosening it up allows you to spin it 90 degrees. So there's a black ring in front of that ring with the tripod mount that we'll remove first. It has three little screws on it going around. And one of the screws, there are two exposed right here. And then the third screw is actually underneath the tripod mount. So to actually be able to remove this correctly, will actually remove this tripod mount itself. And the tripod mount has three little, or it has four little screws going around here. So just remove the tripod mount itself and that reveals the third little screw on this piece right here. So now these other three screws can be removed on the top section here to just loosen up that first ring. So there's that first ring, and now just loosen up the tripod mount ring and it should slide off as well. The next section we're going to remove is the entire back section of the lens right here going around. So it's the actual housing for all these various mechanical components uh, on the back section. And this will allow us to then remove the back optic because it will be a little bit easier to access at that stage. So this back section is held in place by six screws going around on this top lip right here. Uh, so that undo these six screws and this entire back section should just slide out of place. Okay, so there's the entire back section. Notice it does have some mechanical coupling pieces on the inside. And now the back optic is a little bit more accessible. So it's actually not as far down within the lens as it was before. So looking here at the back optic, there are two sets of little divots on it. Um, one on the outside here, and then a second pair on the inside a little further down. We want the ones on the outside to actually loosen up the entire back optic. The ones on the inside allow you to remove the individual elements, which is not what we want to do at this stage. So I'll go on the outside divots here, just loosen this up. And here's the much smaller back optic of the lens. Using the little divots that are here on the, let me focus a little, that are here on the inside of the lens, like here, and on the other side as well, you can actually remove the individual elements and clean inside um, of the lens if you want to, uh, but I'm not going to do that here. Again, you should only really do that if there's actually fungus inside and there's a real problem that you're trying to address. If there's not really any problem where there's just a minor amount of dust, you'll probably introduce more dust or mess things up more um, by disassembling the lens that way. But you can clean pretty safely on the front and back surfaces of the lens. So now we have both sides of the diaphragm exposed as well. It's a little bit easier to clean the back side of the diaphragm if you're going to be trying to do that, just because it is much closer to the surface here, so you're not trying to stick things as far down inside of the lens to work with it, and you can see what you're doing a little bit better. But it's still not uh, great to actually clean it inside of the lens, um, but it's also a lot of work to actually remove the diaphragm and clean the lens uh, that way as well by removing all the individual components. I'll continue on with the disassembly here and actually start removing the diaphragm though and show how that is done. So looking here at the lens, you see as I focus in and out here, the focusing is limited in both directions by this little post here. So as I focus to either extreme, this little post is going to hit up against these 
metal walls over here. And as you focus in and out on this lens, the thing that keeps the intersection, or the thing that makes the intersection go up and down instead of just spinning around is this little track system on the back. So on either side, there's a track here with a little coupler from the intersection to the outer section that guides the intersection along that track. So when you actually focus in and out, instead of just spinning around, that little guide goes along the track and forces the intersection up and down instead of just spinning about. So to actually, what we actually want to do at this stage is remove the inner part of the focusing mechanism from the outer part of the focusing mechanism. And to do that, we're going to undo the little track right here, um, which is just held in place each side by three little screws. So I'll undo the six screws total in the little track system here. Okay, and now I'll grab, I'm going to have it focused over at infinity currently with the little stopper over at infinity. And I'm going to grab the front section of the lens only and start unscrewing it. And once I get past where I could normally focus before, I'm just going to go very slowly right here and see where it falls out of position. So right here is where the two section or where the two sections have separated. And right at this position, I'm going to mark where the two sections were lining up. So I kind of already have a mark there, but I'll just mark that lining up and remember that it was over at infinity when I removed these two sections. Now I can actually separate the two. So the outer section here has just the focusing mechanism and then the, or the focusing ring that you grip onto and then the outer part of the focusing mechanism here on the inside. The inner part has the aperture and then the actual inner part of the focusing mechanism here. As you can see though, the, the aperture is still pretty far down within the lens, so it's still not easy to clean. So to continue on with the disassembly, we have to remove a few more components here. First, we'll remove this black ring that's right below the top section here. So this one in between the focusing mechanism down here and the top section. There's just a little screw right here, a slotted screw that's holding it in place, or just kind of locking it in position. Just loosen that up a little bit, and then this should unscrew. So just remove that, just a little guard ring there. Now I've exposed two other, or one other ring here, this kind of gold colored ring um, that's in between the focusing mechanism and the top section. So what we want to do at this stage is actually remove the inner part of the focusing mechanism here um, from the rest of the lens. And that will allow us to then disassemble the diaphragm a little bit better. So right here, I'm looking at right above the gold ring right here, um, there's two little screws right here and here. Uh, and they're holding in this metal bar going across on the inside here. That's what's locking the focusing mechanism in place uh, on the inside of the lens. So we'll just undo these two real quick. Get those two screws and then lift out the little bar that's on the inside here. So this guy. Just lift that out of there. And now we can actually unscrew the focusing mechanism itself from the inside of the lens. The gold ring doesn't really unscrew, but the inner part of the focusing mechanism does. So you want to grab onto the gold ring, and the inner part of the focusing mechanism is screwing into it. So you can either spin around the gold ring or spin around the inner part of the focusing mechanism to get these undone. Okay. So there's that focusing mechanism. And here's the entire diaphragm assembly now. And what we've now exposed is, if you look at the front of the lens here, you'll notice that there are all these different layers in the lens. So there's the top one, and then the kind of middle one, the bottom one, and then the actual diaphragm way down there. Uh, and all these are held in place by little set screws going around on the exterior here at different layers. So the first layer is held in place by just these three little screws at the top, but then the next two layers are held in place by these little set screws down here. And then the actual diaphragm mechanism is held in place by this last little set screw. So now we have access to all those little set screws. We can actually go in through the front of the lens and start removing the different layers and getting access to the final layer with the diaphragm in it. So looking here at the front of the lens, see if I can get the lighting a little better. So the first layer has these three little screws going around on the top section here. So we'll just loosen these up. So there's the three little screws for that piece. And then this entire piece will just lift out and set that aside. So the next layer here has, 
right down here actually. It has three little set screws going around the top right here. So there's that layer. And then the final layer before the diaphragm, again, has just three little set screws. It's the one on the top here, closest to the gold ring again. So there's that ring. Now finally, we have the entire aperture exposed. And at this point, it's very similar to a lot of the other Minolta lenses. Um, where it just has these three little set screws holding on the front plate and then the back plate also held in place. So we'll just undo the three little set screws um, and remove the front plate and let all the blades fall out of place. Um, and then for the reassembly, we'll actually put the entire thing back together with the two plates. So looking here at the back, you've noticed all the blades have kind of fallen out of place at this stage. The back plate is just held in place loosely. Um, it's going through right here next to the two long bars over here. This one little short bar is part of the back plate and it has a little spring holding it in place. So just undo the spring. You can actually try to remove the entire diaphragm all assembled, but usually I find that doesn't really work too well. Um, so I just will let the blades fall out of place here and remove the two plates. Here is the back plate right here, entire assembly, and the blades as well. And then one thing I forgot to mention is that there's this ring on the top that kind of sets on top and is what the set screws are actually locking into as part of the uh, assembly there. So now we've actually removed the diaphragm, have all the blades separate so that those can all be cleaned on their own. So at this stage, you have the lens pretty much all disassembled, and you can see it's pretty complicated, uh, much more complicated than the, um, the 135 millimeter Minoltas, and very close to how it's assembled to the 200 millimeter Minoltas. So I have the diaphragm here, and in this case, the blades are pretty clean, so I'm not actually gonna clean them off. I just wanted to demonstrate how you would disassemble a diaphragm and reassemble it on one of these longer Minolta lenses. So we have the diaphragm, the optics here, which again can be further disassembled if you really need to clean inside of those. All the different mechanical sections and the body sections all individually separated here. Um, you can also remove some of the various body sections like on the focusing mechanism here. It's a good idea if you do that to actually mark how everything is lining up when you're reassembling it. Um, but I'll just skip that step because it's really just undoing the three screws going around the inside here. And then it, that allows you to clean this body section on the outside separately from the inner part of the focusing mechanism here. So now we'll start on the reassembly. And the reassembly is gonna be a little bit more challenging on this lens because of its size and how far you have to work down inside of the lens for some of the things. It's especially true for the diaphragm, which is what we're gonna reassemble first here. So conceptually, the diaphragm reassembly is very similar to all the other Minolta lenses. So we have, let me get the different components lined up here. So they're all in view. So we have three rings that we're dealing with right now. The back plate of the diaphragm, and I'm just avoiding handling them to avoid getting um, oil on them. So the back plate of the diaphragm right here. And if you look closely at it, you'll notice that the front part of the, the back plate has little six little posts going around on the exterior here. And then the back part has one long silver post there. Then we have the front part of the diaphragm um, plate right here and it has six little holes going around here. And then we have the six diaphragm blades and then this other plate here. And this plate um, or ring just goes on top of the diaphragm and it's what's actually locking the set screws in place. So for the individual blades, if I grab one, each blade has a little, each blade has a slot on one side and then a post protruding up on the other side. So the way this is all going to work is that this slot is going to go onto the back plate of the diaphragm on the little posts over there. And then the little um, post is going to go into the front part of the diaphragm and those two will lock together. The back part is the only part that, of the diaphragm that actually moves. The front part of the diaphragm is stationary uh, and when the back part rotates around back and forth, the front part will, um, because the front part is locked in place, the blades will open and close. So the reassembly of the diaphragm is pretty easy in this case because the blades are so large. So I'll just grab a blade to start with, again, avoiding handling them directly. So I'm using a tweezers here. Um, and I'll just grab it and get one of them started into the posts, into the slot on the back section of the diaphragm. 
So I have one blade started now. Next I'll grab the next blade and I'll just position it directly on top of that previous one so that they're overlapping. And I'll just continue around doing that for the next three. This last one is the only real complicated one. It's going to go on top of the first one, or on top of the one we just placed, but also underneath the first one. So I'll just get it started there, and then kind of holding down, let me get a different screwdriver for this. Kind of holding down on this side over here, I'll just nudge it under the first one as well, until things are lining up properly. You want it so that all the blades are kind of going around the inside of the circle right here, so that they're all kind of lined up. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, just have to get this front plate on top of those blades and line up the six little posts here with the six little holes in this front plate. So I'll just get this lined up. Orientation on this doesn't really matter. Get it started on a few and then just work the rest back and forth until they're actually lining up as well. Okay, so if everything's lined up properly, when you move the two, or when you move the back plate back and forth, the blades should open and close like that. So actually getting this piece back into the diaphragm mechanism is a little bit hard. It's one of the more challenging aspects of the reassembly. So let me zoom out a little bit. On the back section of the diaphragm right here, there's this little metal post sticking up. And on this piece over here, the actual diaphragm housing, next to the two long levers on this side, there's a little slot right here that that post needs to go into. So that provides a rough guide. The actual challenging part is getting, the, um, getting this diaphragm piece into the diaphragm mechanism without losing any of the blades and getting them out of position. So with the diaphragm piece reassembled, I'll just set it on top of this little piece of pipe right here. Because of the depth that the diaphragm mechanism has to go to, uh, it's a little bit hard to actually do it with your fingers and try to get this lined up properly and, and stick the two back together. So it helps to have something to set it on to get this lined up properly. Uh, so I'll take this piece of pipe and it's a little bit smaller than the diaphragm piece, which is what you need for this. And I'll just start threading it up through here making sure that that back post is lined up properly until those are lined up. And let's see, almost got it. There we go. So now I've got the two sections together. I'll be sure to press hard to keep them together and I'll remove the piece of pipe. And now drop this next ring in place. The ring has two sides. It has a more flat side and then it has a side that kind of slopes in. You want the side that slopes in going up because that's what the screws are going to lock into. So I'll just drop that in place. Make sure again that everything is flat and flush down there. And now I'll just hold this in place very carefully. And I'll take the three set screws on the lowest of the three pair going around here and line them up and just reattach the diaphragm piece here. Again, having that piece of pipe really does help with the reassembly. Uh, if you don't have it, it can be pretty challenging to get the two pieces back together. Okay, so just everything's now reattached, but what you may notice is that the diaphragm is not properly opening and closing. So the two levers, if you mess around with them on the back section here, um, it looks actually pretty good in this stage. It's not fully closing though, so this is a little bit too far open um, right now. And that's because when we reattached the front plate here, it wasn't in the, in the correct position. So the way to fix that, um, and this is one thing you have to be a little bit careful with uh, while doing this or else you can um, dislodge all the blades and have to repeat the entire process over again, is to just loosen up the little screws here, one or two turns. Now you want to spin the front plate of this assembly around the front of the diaphragm plate around until it's lining up properly. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver here to kind of spin this around a little bit. So that looks a little bit better for the minimum and I'll try locking that down again just with one of the screws. See how that's looking. 
Make sure that when it's fully open, none of the blades are visible from the back side here. And when it's fully closed, it's about how it was originally. Um, when you're initially taking apart the lens, it may help to actually photograph things. And you can also mark how things were lining up originally on the inside of the lens here. But I kind of, I took a photograph originally of how it was opening and closing, just to make sure that the extent was about right. And for this video, I'm gonna say that this is probably about right here. So that looks good. And I'll tighten down the rest of the screws to make sure that the blades do not come out of place again. So now it's a matter of reinstalling the other layers of, let me get a different thing to set this on. Reinstalling the other layers of the diaphragm housing. So the first one we have here is the smaller of the two rings, or I guess they're about the same size. It's the thicker one. Um, and that one goes down in first. You'll notice it has two sides, one that has um, a hole going in on this side, or it's indented going in on this side, and then one that has a flat surface on the other side. You want the flat surface side going up, so I'll just slide it in place, make sure it's all flush down in the lens, and then reattach the three little screws, set screws on the second layer of the three. So there's that layer. Next one is very similar. Again, it has one side that kind of folds down a little bit, the other side that's flat. You want the flat side going up and just drop it into place, make sure it's flat down in the lens and then reattach the three little set screws on the last layer on this inside piece here. Okay, and you wanna make sure that all the screws going around are flush so that they're not protruding out of the lens because that will prevent you from reattaching some of the later sections. Now I'll actually reattach, oh, uh, actually there's one more top section here, this ring, uh, and it just slides in place. It has three little cutouts for the screws and just slides down and then reattaches with the three screws going around on the top section. So get that in place as well. So that has all the different layers in here all reassembled. Now we'll actually start reassembling the diaphragm housing itself, getting the rest of that together. We'll start off here by grabbing the outer part of the focusing mechanism, or the inner part of the focusing mechanism, the silver section, and it just slides in place here. The thing that's, that have to get lined up properly for this piece is it has to screw into the gold section down here, and then it also has this cutout over here, which has to line up with the two screw holes eventually that go right here and here. But first off, we just wanna screw these two pieces together. Again, you can spin the gold ring or spin the silver ring to get this done. And once you have everything tightened down, you wanna make sure that the two little screws over here are properly exposed. So I'm going to just loosen up the silver ring a little bit and then tighten everything down using the gold ring again to make sure that the silver ring is in place. Don't need to do it too hard yet, um, just like that. Now I'll grab this little metal bar right here, got a brass colored bar, so drop it in place into the silver ring right over those two screws, and then reattach the two screws that were locking the silver ring in place. Make sure that the gold ring is all the way tight on there as well. It's all, nothing's moving about. This is also a good step to reinstall the back optic at. So I have the little back optic right here and it just screws in place into the back of the lens. And tighten it down with the spanning wrench. So to complete the assembly of the diaphragm housing here, I'm just gonna reinstall this black ring that goes around and kind of covers everything up. It's one of the body rings. It has a top section with grooves going around here that just screws into the top section here. That side goes down and it just lines up. And you'll use the little tiny set screw to actually lock it in position so it doesn't spin around. This is also a good stage to reinstall the little back optiget. Just screws in place into the back section of the lens here. We can lock it down with the spanning wrench. That's looking good. And now we have to get the two sections of the lens back together. So we have 
the diaphragm housing and the focusing piece here. And before, kind of marked where these two were lining up a little bit. So I'll find that marking. So the two were lining up right about here when they fell out of position. And so I should be able to thread these back together. Make sure it's focused over at infinity. And I'll screw them together all the way first. And then just, I'll just loosen it up a little bit until I have it all focused at infinity here with the indicator. And also have the three screws on each side lined up with the two tracks here. You want to have a little bit of a gap between the two so that they can actually have the track system going into place on either side. Now I'll take the little track system here and on either side just put the little track piece in place and reinstall the three screws on each side as well to get this track system working so that the inner part of the focusing mechanism moves up and down instead of just rotating about. If you're having trouble um, reattaching the two sections and things are not lining up properly, there are only three or four positions where the, the two sections can really fit back together. And you want to make sure that when it, this little indicator is all the way over at infinity here, the track is only like a millimeter or so below where it needs to be um, on here. And it should go through the entire range and kind of snap at both ends here. So it, this little indicator is actually hitting the extremes, one on this side for the minimum and on the other side for the maximum at infinity. The next step is reinstalling this back mounting plate piece, or this back, uh, not mounting plate, but the entire back assembly that has all the various uh, mechanical couplings from the back section of the lens into the diaphragm. You notice that on this back section of the lens, it has this kind of weird hook-shaped hook metal piece on the inside here. And that's the one that's going to hook onto the um, onto the lever that directly controls the diaphragm. So there are the two levers back here. One controls the aperture control curve on the back section, and one controls the diaphragm directly. So the shorter one, it's just a little bit shorter here, that's the one that's controlling the aperture control curve. You can see that it moves this metal piece on the inside back and forth. If I, so this metal section here, that's actually the aperture control curve. So as I move it back and forth, there's this little post right over here. Let me try zooming in a little. There's this little post right over here that's moving up and down this curve on the inside. So I'm just moving the curve back and forth and I can hold the post against it here. So it's moving up and down and opening and closing the aperture. The other one directly controls the aperture itself and is normally held open by a spring right over here. So this one directly controls the aperture when I move it back and forth. And that's the one we want to couple to. So this one over here is the one we want to couple to with that long metal post on the back because it's hooking the stop down lever on the back section into the diaphragm and into the aperture mechanism. So to reattach this, I'll get the little fork section of that hook onto the post that's directly controlling the aperture. And then line up the six other little screws going around here. There's only really one position that this can go into once you have the hook installed and I'll just reattach these two components. Now I can start putting together some of these other body rings. So first off we have this ring right here. Or actually, sorry, this one. The aperture, can, or the tripod mounting ring. It has two sides, a larger side and then one that kind of tapers down. The larger side goes up on here uh, and you kind of want this to slide together so that it's flush against the rest of the ring here, and the rest of the rings here, and then it rotates back and forth between about 90 degrees or so. I'm not going to lock, that one doesn't really get locked in place at this stage. The next ring is this one, this little metal ring here. It has a white dot indicator right here. That dot indicator is going to go over by where the current focus is on this. And this one actually does lock into things, so it has four little screw holes going around here. This is upside down. So get that lined up with the white dot going there. And then the four screws also should line up. Slide the tripod mount over at this stage um, so that it's in between the two screws here. And now we can actually reinstall the tripod mount. It has one side that kind of protrudes out a little bit. That's the side that goes down 
um, towards the end of the lens here, and then the four screws that lock it in place. So there's the tripod mount and everything reinstalled here. The next ring we have to reinstall is the aperture control ring right here. So it has this long metal piece sticking down from it. That's the one that's coupling into the diaphragm on that second metal post on the inside here. So the one metal post that directly controlled the aperture we saw before, that one's already coupled into the diaphragm mechanism or into the mechanical back sections of the lens. The second post is controlling the um, diaphragm and the aperture control curve directly. And this little fork is gonna go on top of it. So that goes like that. On this piece, there are two things that have to get lined up properly uh, to lock it in place as well. One is this little lever piece here, the little button. It kind of forces things open. And that just screws in place over here, right next to the indicators and numbers. The other piece to complete the reassembly of the aperture control ring is getting the little ball bearing back in place as well. Because right now when you turn it back and forth, it doesn't have any clicking sound. So we might as well get the little ball bearing back in place. It just drops into the little hole right over here, this large screw hole, and then the large screw goes on top of it. So now when you turn the aperture back and forth, it should make that clicking sound. Now I can also drop the little spacer right here into place. Just goes around the exterior here and flat down inside the aperture control ring. And now it's time to get the back mounting plate lined up properly with the rest of the lens. So you'll notice on the mounting plate we have the stop down lever. So looking just at the mounting plate piece over here, the stop down lever moves this metal piece on the back here, the kind of crescent shaped metal piece going around here. So when I hit the stop down lever, it moves that back and forth. And on that metal shaped piece, there's this little post sticking up over on this side as well. So that little post is what's actually going to be directly coupling in to the, um, to the, the mechanism on the back of the lens here. So we have it all hooked up right now so that the aperture control ring opens and closes the aperture but there's nothing actually holding the aperture open. So that's what this little back section is going to be doing with the spring mechanism over here. So to get this lined up properly, this little post right here on the back section of the lens on the mounting plate needs to go over in this section over here where the, um, where the levers are that directly control the aperture. So as I move this piece back and forth on the inside here, you can see the aperture opening and closing. So those two are gonna get coupled together. And one easy way to line these up is that this cutout over here on this piece is going to line up with the cutout on this section of the lens over here. So those screws are all going to get lined up. So like this, and then I can just kind of work the aperture control ring back and forth and the stop down lever back and forth until everything is in a position. And at that stage, it should then open and close the aperture when I move it back and forth. And the last component of the back reassembly is this little piece right here. So the back section of the mounting plate, just kind of a protector piece. It's gonna go so that, this piece is, needs to be lined up so that the little red dot indicates the correct mounting position um, of the lens and just helps with all that. So the way to get that lined up is find the numbers over here and then find the button and the little red dot kind of lines up with where the button needs to go. And there should be four screws uh, that are then in position once you line up the red dot with the button. And that should just help with mounting the lens properly. And this piece attaches with four little screws going around on the top. So now it's time to start and complete the reassembly of the front section of the lens here. So the front section is really easy to reassemble. Just take the front optic here, screw it into place. And then take the lens hood piece and it just is going to go over the front optic and also screw in place. And on the lens hood, there's that little set screw right, uh, right here that just locks it in place and keeps it from spinning and make sure that the lens hood then can go flat on the lens.
So that has the entire reassembly of this lens complete. You can just make sure that everything's working properly, focusing, aperture, stop down lever, and the tripod mount rotating properly. Overall, I'd say it's a fairly hard lens to take apart just because uh, you, to make simple repairs like accessing the diaphragm to clean it off, you really have to disassemble almost the entire lens. You saw that we had to go in and remove all the front elements, a lot of these different layers within the diaphragm housing to just be able to remove the diaphragm. And then once you do remove the diaphragm and take it apart and reassemble it outside the lens, it can be challenging to get that piece back inside the lens as well. The lens does use high quality components for the most part, but it's more uh, elongated and stretched out design leads to some interesting problems where things might not fit together properly. So you have to be careful when putting it back together to mark where everything is lining up. So it's definitely a more difficult lens to repair. It's very repairable, but it might take a little bit more effort to actually be able to make those repairs.